If he eventually catches the current and hits his NBA stride, we could be talking about a potent blend of Penny Hardaway and Russell Westbrook. Like Penny, he's got the size, handle, passing, and scoring instincts to take over a game in any way. And like Westbrook, he's got that hidden jetpack strapped to his back, the one with the turbo feature that allows him to explode like a rocket ship or cannonball. Exum uses a lightning quick first step to blow by defenders and a dynamite last step to sky over them. You're just not going to find another point guard who's as dangerous attacking the rim, especially in the open floor, where he can be absolutely unstoppable. That was a quote said by NBA scout and draft expert Jonathan Wasserman. While there were plenty of other players in the 2014 draft with more credentials than Dante Exum, he was a one-of-a-kind talent. A player with the skills, the playstyle, and the potential to surpass all his peers. His value increased even more after the 2013 FIBA Under-19 World Cup, where he looked like an absolute powerhouse eventually becoming just one of five players to be named to the all-tournament team. What's crazy is that he was only 17 at the time of the tournament, yet he was already one of the best young players the world has ever seen. Unfortunately, he never lived up to the hype. I'm aware of how his injuries hampered his development, but even when he was healthy, there were glaring issues in his game that made him struggle so much in the NBA. Let's take a look at them. How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and today, let's take a look at how Dante Exum's NBA career failed. Coming into the 2014 draft, there were plenty of comparisons to all-time greats. Penny Hardaway, Magic Johnson, bigger point guards who were so skilled and dominant. At 6'6", Dante Exum also drew comparisons to Michael Carter-Williams, who got drafted in the previous year. But Exum was considered to have superior ball handling, defense, shooting, and just a way better instinct for the game compared to him. The sky was the limit. The only red flag was that he didn't go to any US college, so we truly did not know how he matched up against other college players in America. It should have been a bigger red flag, honestly, but the scouts overlooked it, and he was still considered a top-tier prospect. With the fifth pick, the Jazz selected him. At the time, they were a very bad team, so it was Exum who was supposed to carry the mantle into the future. For once, it looked like the Jazz got the guy they wanted. However, the development would be slow. In Exum's rookie season, his numbers were, honestly, horrendous. Not just his numbers, but from the eye test, too. Exum looked completely lost every time he touched the ball. That year, he played 22 minutes a game, and even started in 41 out of 82 games. That's a significant amount of time and opportunity to capitalize on. What actually happened was, he was literally the worst player in the league who played 20 plus minutes a night. Out of all players who fit the minutes criteria, he had the lowest PER, the lowest true shooting percentage, the lowest field goal percentage, and a negative win shares. There's no sugarcoating it, he was absolutely terrible. He even had an absurd turnover rate of 21.5%. Over one-fifth of his possessions resulted in a turnover, which is kinda ridiculous considering nobody even paid attention to him on offense. This was mostly due to errant passes and just flat-out fumbling the ball frequently. The issue is, this mostly has to do with the fact that the guy was not a point guard coming in to begin with. Exum played mostly shooting guard prior to the NBA, so he severely lacked the skills and court vision to play point guard. Despite being described as having a great feel for the game prior to the NBA, it certainly did not translate to Utah. It didn't help that he himself desperately wanted to play point guard, and the team tried to mold him into a big point guard. He wasn't like that. In an article from back in 2015, there was a review of Exum's rookie season, and they had this to say about his offense. Exum was frequently found to be timid on offense, failing to attack the rim, instead resorting to the three-point line. Dante took 126 two-point shots this season, with only 67 being within four feet, showing his reluctance to attack and shoot at the rim. This was a problem because his biggest strength coming in was his ability to attack the rim and finish. So him not doing this frequently enough and just getting stopped out on the perimeter, this caused his entire offense to struggle. With all that being said, there was one saving grace of Exum's game. In the games that Dante Exum was in the starting lineup, the Utah Jazz were actually first in the entire league in defense. 
allowing just 97.1 points per 100 possessions. That was also first among all rookies. Basically, Exum was a defensive powerhouse right when he came in. His incredibly quick lateral movement translated over to the NBA very well. Combined with his 6'9 wingspan, he was a nightmare for opposing guards to get past. However, defense would be the only bright side of his game, but it was enough to the point where we thought he would have a promising future, strictly off of defense. Many fans believed the offense will come along with it over time, right? The truth is, that rarely ever happens. There are so many rooks who come in as defensive studs, but their offense never develops. Think Stanley Johnson or Justice Winslow. Even today, they're still all below average offensive players if not outright bad. For Exum, it was way worse, because his offense was statistically the worst in the NBA by a large margin for any player who played significant minutes. But because he was only 19 years old, nobody judged him. This was all part of his development process. Still, we saw the red flags. There was a lot of concern. Then, prior to the start of his sophomore year, he tore his ACL while playing for Team Australia. That forced him to miss his entire sophomore season, as he had to rehab and work his way back. Some attribute this injury as the main reason why his career failed, because typically players make the biggest jump of their careers during their second year. Exum spent the entire year rehabbing and recovering, and couldn't get that much needed experience. When he came back his third year, he did show visible signs of improvement. His shooting and scoring improved from all areas of the floor, plus he wasn't turning the ball over as much as before. The major concern was that the ACL injury would have sapped his athleticism, but he was still fine for the most part. Defensively, he was still a beast, a fearsome opponent, and it didn't seem like he lost much of his quickness. There was some progress being made, although not much, but it was still a promising start. Then, once again, he suffered another major injury. Another massive setback. Exum underwent shoulder surgery right before his fourth season, which caused him to miss the majority of the year. Despite the awful early start to his NBA career, injury after injury, you'd expect the Jazz to give up on him already. For any other young guy who had this unfortunate of a start, there's no way the team would even think about keeping him. But they still believed in him. The Jazz still had hope that he could someday become the player they dreamed he would be. And so, in the summer of 2018, they offered Exum a three-year $33 million extension. He showed some promise after he came back from shoulder surgery, as he returned for the playoffs and had some great defensive showings against the Thunder and Rockets. It was only a brief period when he was healthy, but apparently it was good enough for the Jazz to offer him that extension, which a lot of people criticized at the time. The Jazz were finally back in the playoff race, and to give this much money to Dante Exum, it certainly limited their flexibility. Sadly, the injuries would not stop. As the years went by, he suffered numerous ankle problems and another major knee injury. The Jazz eventually gave up on him, and after an underwhelming stint in Cleveland, his NBA journey came to an unsurprising end. At least for now. He's still young, so there's still hope he can come back if he plays well overseas. So, aside from the injuries, which are the obvious reasons why his NBA career failed, in his healthy years though, why couldn't his skills translate to the NBA? Well, for one, he was incredibly weak and fragile. It was predicted his frame would fill out and get stronger, and during his rehab with injuries, Exum did spend a lot of that time lifting weights. However, even then, as he got stronger and came back, he struggled to bully smaller guys. Exum never used his size to overpower his defenders. He didn't develop an adequate postgame either, which taller point guards should take advantage of. Most importantly though, he was never a good facilitator or passer. That was a major weakness coming into the NBA, and it never changed. The problem with most bigger point guards was that they spent a lot of their time in their younger days playing shooting guard. Exum literally was a shooting guard. Prior to the draft, he was considered a shooting guard, but he wanted to play point guard. The Jazz wanted him to play point guard too. Teams in general wanted to mold him into a point guard, because there's an obsession these days with having bigger guys run the points. The issue is, that's not who he is. That's not who he's ever been. He never learned the skills of a point guard growing up, because he rarely played that position. 
A lot of simple tasks that every point guard has to master, like ball handling skills, making precise passes without turning it over, how to pass out of the paint if you encounter a defender, he could not grasp any of that in the NBA. Plus, you add on the fact that he was basically an unproven talent coming into the draft. As I mentioned earlier, he didn't play against legit college competition, and his ridiculously high draft position was unwarranted to begin with. Yeah, I get that some guys come straight out of high school and made it big time, but that only applied to players who were astronomically impressive in high school. Exum, you know, playing in Australia, the standards were a lot different. It was mainly his FIBA World Cup performances that made him stand out, but you can't trust such a small sample size. Overall, of course none of this really matters, because the injuries were so devastating and held him back so much that it was impossible to make any sort of progress. Any part of his game that was weak and needed improvement, he didn't have enough time on the court to actually develop, because he always got injured. It's unfortunate, but stuff like that happens. Anyway, that's all folks. Let me know your thoughts on Dante Exum. Do you believe he'll return to the NBA someday? There's still a lot of time left for him to salvage his career, if he stays healthy. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.